Ecclesiastes 12, 7 tells us that death is coming for you. That's why, I hope you're listening, the most important thing in your life is your faith. That should be the most important thing in your life is faith. And thank you for tuning in to the Lift Up Jesus broadcast. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, and on today's program, I'm going to be speaking on the important topic of the valleys that we encounter in life. We're going to unpack five significant insights about the valleys of life, including death, which is a stubborn, unpredictable, and personal fact, and why believers in Christ need not fear. This is a message that everyone needs to hear. So ask a loved one to join you and have your Bible in your notes and a pen ready. Let's begin today's message called In the Valley. I wanna to speak to you on the subject, In the Valley, In the Valley. I want you to take your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter 23. Now, uh, several years ago, my wife and I, we started having grandbabies. How many grandparents do we have out here today? Oh, it is the greatest thing ever. And um, we, have, we have two grandchildren, um, two boys, and hopefully we have many, many more, amen? And recently I was in Hobby Lobby, the greatest store on the planet, and um, I saw this sign, I took a photograph of it. It's a grandpa's to-do list. Uh, a grandpa's got four jobs. He's got to pick up the grandkids. He's got to spoil them. You give them sugar, and then you give them back to their parents. Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's a great deal. Now, every grandparent has to have, you have to come up with your own name, what you want your grandkids to call you. So, so I'm Papa Coach. My grandkids, they call me Papa Coach because I'm going to coach these kids, okay? They're going to be six, eight, six, nine. Oh, they're going to be great basketball or football. Oh, who cares? Maybe tennis. I don't know. But uh, my wife... She, she came up with her name, and I don't know where she got this name, but she wants to be called, and they call her the Nanny Goat. <laughs> the Nanny Goat. Now, she did not think that through, uh, because they basically call her Goat, and uh, she didn't like that. She wants to be called Nanny, but the kids, you know, they're small, so they just, they end up, they just call her Go-Go. That's all they get, Go-Go. That's what she knows that, okay? So... If you see my wife, you can call her Go-Go, and uh, she'll respond to you. But uh, the word goat stands for the greatest of all time. And Renee might be the greatest grandparent of all time because she spoils those kids as good as any grandparent. But we're looking at the scriptures, and we're looking at what we're calling the greatest chapter, the chapter, the greatest chapter of all time, which is Psalm 23. And I don't know if you've ever really considered this, the scope uh, and the magnificence of this psalm, but if you think about the reach of it, the scope of it, it's, it's sweet, it's sweet to a little child, and yet it's perplexing to the scholar. This psalm has been quoted at both funerals and weddings. It, is, it has been read in the nursery school it's also read on the battlefield before soldiers go to war. And today we continue our study. We come to verse 4, which reads, if you have your Bibles are on the screen, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are what? You are with me. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We come to what I believe is the heart and soul of this chapter. And once again, it's amazing how something that was written 3,000 years ago is so relevant to what's going on in our world right here and right now. Why there's so many angles, it's hard to even know where to begin, but I want you to, if you're taking notes, I want to highlight a few noteworthy considerations for us today. Number one, 
We are all, we all walk through that valley. There's no one in this room that's not going to walk through that valley. No one. One of the greatest fears in life is the fear of dying. And I've realized that people fall in one or two camps. Some people, that's all they do is think about it. And some people choose to stay busy and somehow ignore the inevitable. I grew up in a great state of Kansas, and from time to time, uh, because Kansas uh, is Kansas, we had a lot of people in the church that owned ranches, that had horses, and from time to time, we'd get to go to someone's house and ride horses. And they were always scary to me. I, 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 you know, I wanted to get on one, but they were scary because they're huge animals and they're, they're so strong. And when you're a little kid, they seem really, really large. And one day, uh, I had a near-death experience. I got on a horse and it seemed calm at the time, but after a while, it started bucking a little bit. And I mean, I tried to hold on with all my might. I just couldn't hold on and it bucked me off. And that, that, that was okay, that was not the problem. The problem is my foot got caught in the stirrup. And so it was dragging me around and my head was on the ground and I thought I was gonna die and I, I was about to lose consciousness and, and all hope and just, uh, just about that moment, thank heavens, the Kmart manager came over and unplugged the machine. And here I am. How many of you know someone who's stubborn? Raise your hand if you know someone who's stubborn. Now be careful, they might be sitting next to you. They might take offense. We all know someone who's stubborn. I want you to write this down. Death is a stubborn fact. It's stubborn fact. You can ignore it all you want. You can deny it all you want. You can fight it all you want. It won't do you any good. Hebrews 9, 27 tells us it is appointed unto man once to die. Every single person in this room, look around. Every one of us have an appointment with death. And just because you shove that thought into the subconsciousness does not alleviate the reality that we're all going to die. Death is a stubborn fact. Number two, write this down. Death is an unpredictable fact. God's got a thousand ways to take us from this life into the next. A thousand ways. James tells us that life is but a mist. You're here for just a few seconds, and then you're gone. That's how James describes our life. You know, last year, we did a lot of funerals here at the church. We do funerals, you, you should know this, we do funerals every week here at the church. I don't know what you're out doing, but we're doing funerals is what we do at the church. We care for the dying. And we did very, very, very few de uh, funerals because of COVID last year. I mean, we do a few, but I mean, not many. But we do all kinds of funerals for people who've died of cancer, for, for people who've died of accidents, uh, we had a guy on our staff, I told you, he was riding his bicycle, he was about a block from his house, and just kind of fell over and hit his head and died. One of my dear friends, he's our handyman at our house named Bill, he, climbed, he was climbing up a ladder. His wife came out and said, you shouldn't be on that ladder. He goes, I know what I'm doing. She went inside the house, she just had a bad feeling, went out and he was laying on the, on the ground de dead. I don't know if he fell and, and, and died or if he had a stroke or what happened. But we have people that die. I mean, people drown. People have car accidents. Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter accident. I mean, there, God's got a thousand. Here's the point. You are here. You're here one, one moment. You're here. And the next moment, you're gone. And there's nothing you can do about it. So death is a stubborn fact. It's an unpredictable fact. Write this down. Death is a personal fact. Ecclesiastes 12.7 tells us that death is coming for you that's why i hope you're listening the most important thing in your life is your faith that should be the most important thing in your life is faith see we pursue we pursue all these other words that start with the letter f 
We pursue food, friends, fame, fortune, friendships, fitness, anything that makes us feel good, fashion. But the most important thing in your life should be your faith. The psalmist tells us that we're all going to, all of us are going to walk through this valley. Number two, write this down. The valley is always temporary. The valley is always temporary. And this is where we have a hard time understanding this point. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm just walking through. It has been said that every one of us, we're either right now, we're either walking down into that valley or we're right in the middle of the valley or we're in the process of walking out of that valley. But the valley is temporary. Now, scholars, everybody say scholars. Scholars will tell you that there's, there is an actual place called the, the valley of the shadow of death over in Israel. That it's an actual literal place that's located between Jerusalem and the Dead Sea, a, a spring outside of Mount of Olives that has flowed for centuries down to the Dead Sea, has cut a chasm. In some places, it's 1,500 feet deep. It's very narrow at the bottom. There's always shadows in that valley except at 12 o'clock noon. The rest of the day, there's shadows in that valley. And David, who wrote this, is a shepherd by trade, and so David knows the terrain. And if you had sheep there in Israel, you had to go through that valley, the shadow, the valley, the shadow of death, during the different seasons in order to feed the sheep, in order for sheep to survive, because some months are winter months and some months are summer, you have winter and summer, you've got the lowlands and the highlands and the highlands and the lowlands. And so during different seasons of the year, a shepherd had to take the sheep through that valley in order for those sheep to survive. So the valley is only temporary. Now, the sheep that are in the valley might not recognize that it's temporary, but the shepherd who's leading those sheep know that it is temporary. Did I make sense there or not? So the shepherd David knows the valley is not a dead end. It's not a cul-de-sac. The valley is basically a low point between two mountains. And in this verse, he does not say, yea, though I walk down into the valley, yea, though I walk over the valley or near the valley or around the valley, he says, no, Though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil. And is he walking through that valley or is he running through that valley? They're just walking. There's no fear. There's no panic. There's no fretting. Just going through that valley. There's always someone who's fearful who says, oh, I hope one day one day I hope out yonder, if I ever have to go through a tough time I, and I have to go through that valley, I sure do hope God is with me. I've got news for you. Number three, write this down. You're in the valley of the shadow of death right now. You're there right now. You say, no, yes. I can prove it to you. I can prove that you're in the valley of the shadow of death this very moment with a question. How many of you sitting here, right here, right now, that you understand that you could, everybody say the word could, that you could drop dead right here, right now, before this service is over, you could die before the invitation. How many of you, I want you to raise your hand if you understand that you that this day could be it could be your last day here on this earth if you understand that raise your hand look leave your hand up and look around at all the people this could be your last day here on this earth so you're in the valley right now i want you to write this down in your notes you enter the valley on the day of your birth you leave the valley on the day of your death but make no mistake about it, you're in the valley right now. You are walking, breathing. Right now you're sitting, listening, writing, paying attention. 
but you're in the valley of the shadow of death right now. Now, I've got some good news. How many of you want some good news? Raise your hand if you want some good news. Here's the good news. Write this down. Number four, there is no need to fear. There is no need to fear. The psalmist says, even though I'm right there walking through this valley, I, <laughs> I will fear no evil. And there's a point A and a point B. Point A is, that is if, and everybody say if, and, if, and, and this is a big if, if you're a Christian, you have nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing to fear. Now, if you're not a Christian, if you're sitting out here right now, and you're a non-believer, oh, you should be fearful. You should be fearful. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, you have absolutely nothing to fear. Because for a Christian, and this is only for a Christian, I hope you understand this. For a Christian, it is not, it is not a valley of death. For a Christian, it's only a shadow of the valley of death. There's a big difference between the valley of death and a shadow of the valley of death. And, and for a believer, if you know the shepherd and the shepherd knows you, it's not a valley of death, it's just a shadow. And this is, this is point B, write this down in your notes. A shadow can never hurt you. No matter how steep, how dark, how dangerous, how scary, how frightful it is, a shadow can never ever hurt you. Is that good news? That's good news. Now. Uh, many of you know that I, I, I got into cycling about seven, eight years ago. I used to play a lot of basketball. My knees gave out. I, could, I, I literally can hardly walk. It hurts to walk. And uh, I just have to find a way to exercise somehow. And uh, so I, I got on a bicycle. It didn't hurt my knees. And first day I got on that thing, I got addicted to it. And so and now I can't even exist without getting on that bike and getting some exercise. It is so good. The only problem is it's so dangerous. And it's dangerous because of all of you. <laughs> and we ride in these little bike lanes, which, just so you know, we have the right to ride in the middle of the road if we were, we're like people who walk. You can't run over someone who's walking across the street. Uh, and likewise, if a cyclist is in that little lane and he comes out into the main lane, he, he has the right to do that legally. You can't run him over just because he's there or there. He's a human being. Can someone say amen? amen. And when we ride, I'm going to take some pictures one day and show you. There are, there's broken glass. There's rocks. There's someone through a bunch of tacks. We went through a bunch of tacks. People come by and throw stuff at us. They yell at us. They flip us off. They say the meanest things to us. And it's just because some people just don't like cyclists. And, and, and I like to yell at them <laughs> and say... If we were all in cars, you would be going a whole lot slower. So give us the break. Chill. Take a chill. But anyway, back. I, I regress there. So what happens, this is a lot. We're, this happens a lot in the early morning when the sun is rising in the east. And we're going straight west. And uh, we're, we're in the bike lane trying to stay alive. And cars are coming by going east to west you know, 50, 60 miles an hour. And uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I see so many people in the car by themselves wearing a mask, <laughs> texting on their phone. And which one is gonna kill me? The, the texting is what's gonna kill me, right? So. It's a scary proposition, but we're in the bike lane, the car's going east to west, and they're going by 50, 60 miles an hour, but because the sun is a southerly sun as it goes east to west, it casts a shadow from the car. And the cars are going by me real fast. That's not, you know, that's kind of scary, but the shadow, the shadow, I've been in these lanes where the shadows of the cars are running, running me over. Here comes another shadow, whoa, went right past me. His shadow went right over me. 
And I want you to know that I've never, ever, ever been scared of the shadow because I know the shadow can't hurt me. But what, hurts, what can hurt me is that 2,000-pound vehicle with the person texting and they're not paying attention. Now, that can hurt. Can someone say amen? amen. But the shadow, the shadow can't hurt me, but pay attention. The shadow reminds me that I'm only one accident away from death. So the valley of the shadow of death, listen, a child of God has no need to fear of a shadow because we know that we're just passing through this valley anyway, amen? amen. The Bible says in John 11, verse 25, he who believes in me will live even though he dies. Now look at verse 26, and whoever lives and believes in me will, what? Will never die. See, we don't understand that. We think that death is death. Death is not death. Death is just, a, it's, it's just a shadow of something where we're passing from this life and we will, we will never die. So cancer for me is just a shadow. COVID-19 is a shadow. Your heart stops ticking and you fall over right now, that's just a shadow. You fall over dead, it's a shadow. Monday, tomorrow is March 15th. March 15th is tomorrow. Today's March 14th. Tomorrow, March 15th, is the one-year anniversary of my dad passing through this valley called life. And my heart breaks when I think about my dad and how much I miss him, and I, there, there is not, and when you go through this you know, there's not a single day of my life where I don't wish I could see him, or touch him, or hear him, or call him. It hurts, but nowhere at no time in that entire process was I ever afraid, ever, because I know that right now he's with the Good Shepherd. The Lord took him through that valley, and my dad has crossed over. He's crossed over the Jordan River. He's in the presence of God. I will see him again. My dad is alive and well, and right now, this very moment, I'm the one that's in the valley. But I too will one day pass through. Psalm 23, 4, even though right now I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, which leads me to my last point. Write this down. The comfort of the Lord's presence and protection allows us to breathe during the smothering moments of life. Oh, we all walk through that valley, but as we learn today, the valley is always temporary and there is no need to fear if you are a Christian. If we walk with God through life, God will walk with us through death. And remember that we're here to pray with you. You can send in a prayer request through our website or you can call us right now and we'll pray together that God will meet your every need. Please tune in next week as we continue our GOAT series, The Greatest of All Time, looking at three beautiful pictures of God's goodness and provision. And if you want to share this message with your loved ones, you can do so by directing them to our website, liftupjesus.com. Click the Watch and Listen tab, and it will be the first message you see under Lift Up Jesus episodes. This could be the exact message they need to hear in this season of their life. And while you're there, we would love for you to make a donation to this program to take the message of the gospel to the nations of this world. I'll see you here again next week. And until then, wherever you're going and whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Hi, my name is Kathy and I lead the Anchor Cancer Support Group here at Shepherd Church. On August 17th, 2011, I heard the words that nobody wants to hear. And that is, I had cancer. And when I had um, that diagnosis, I did not want to share it with anybody. But God had a different plan in that for me. And so 
it was pretty clear that during my surgery, my chemo, my radiation, all the side effects that I experienced, and even losing my hair, that God knew that I was going to be where I am today. The things that I experienced when I was going through my journey by getting love from other people, getting food, getting prayers, uh, even provisions that I didn't expect was such a blessing to me that I knew that I had to turn it around and give it to others. So God put it on my heart to lead a cancer support life group in my home. We call on each other, we take each other to our doctor's appointments, and we pray for each other right before we're getting ready to go in for our treatments or our scans. We also provide food and, and support for them during their journey. Later on, when I was ready to start the group, God gave me the name Anchor. And I know now why. Because when you think of an anchor, you know that it is linked to a chain. And the members of this group are the links of that chain that were linked on to one another, strong, standing firm to our Father, who is our anchor. And together, we walk this journey with them through this storm, knowing that we need to depend on each other and through our Father in heaven. This group is for everyone. If you're going through cancer, if you've already gone through all of your treatments and you are in remission, it's also for those that are part of the family. Maybe it's you're the caregiver. Maybe it's your coworker. It also could be for the spouse or the children. And more important, this group is for those that have lost someone that have finally gone to see our Father in heaven. And they come back and they share their journey and they love on one another because they've walked that. There are a million and a half people in Los Angeles County living with some form of cancer. And I am so grateful to Shepherd Church for opening up their doors to allow us to have this amazing ministry here. The people of this community need this ministry. And we are so happy to be able to have it here so that we can give them hope and encouragement during their journey. Research proves that it's the regular hearing and teaching of the Word of God that takes our Christian life to a new level. That's why we invite you to meet Dudley Rutherford every week on this station for another powerful message straight from the Bible. You can also visit liftofjesus.com to sign up for our monthly email devotional, discover Pastor Dudley's books and other resources, and see our national TV and radio schedule. And don't hesitate to reach out on the phone or online. Pastor Dudley has a passion and vision to reach more people with a message of hope. And if you'd like to partner with us to touch the world, we'd love to hear from you. Your financial gift will do so much to help us impact the nations for Christ. And if you're ever in the Southern California area, we invite you to visit us at Shepherd Church here in Los Angeles. It's an amazing experience you'll never forget. Until next time, remember to always lift up Jesus.